Hello, thank you for joining this month's Connect with Control M session. My name is Drew Casas and I'll be your facilitator for this webinar. Today we will explain how to configure security key algorithms in the MFT client and SFTP server, as well as updating the JRE package used by the MFT plugin. We have three presenters today from the Control M support team David Martin Caballero, Melvin Abraham, and Sean Ross. We recommend going to full screen mode during this presentation by pressing the full screen button. Please note that this presentation is available via the files pod at the bottom of your screen. For any questions you may have during the presentation, please post them in the Q&A pod. We will be addressing your questions at the end of the session. Today, we'll explain the topics you see here regarding ensuring seamless file transfers over SFTP. We'll demonstrate by configuring security key algorithms for both the MFT client and SFTP server, as well as changing the JRE package used by MFT. Then we'll discuss how to troubleshoot common issues related to the MFT plugin. Afterwards, we'll take your questions during the Q&A session and give you the opportunity to provide your feedback. For our first demonstration, David will demonstrate how to configure security key algorithms and ciphers in the MFT client. David, please go ahead. Thanks for that introduction. Today, I'm going to show how to check what ciphers are allowed on the MFT client for SFTP connections. Then we'll see how to check on the negotiation between MFT client and remote host SSH server. Last, as a business case, I'll demonstrate how to force the MFT client to use a specific cipher. In KA214495, there is information and links to each MFT version, supported ciphers, algorithms, etc. After clicking on the link for the version 9021, I'm redirected to the documentation page. For this demo, I'll be using ControlM9021200. We have created a MFT job which is connecting as a SFTP client to a remote host server. Before running the job and on the ControlM agent, which will execute it, I'm enabling debug logs using the command agdbglvl 5 I'm doing this to be able to review the SSH negotiation details, otherwise they are imprinted. After running the job, I'm back to the agent under proclog folder. CTMMFT.log file has been created. This, fi this file contains MFT debug logs. We can open the file with any tool of our preference. I have run a more command and move forward on it searching the word KEX. That will prompt me to the SSH negotiation messages. A number of options must be agreed. Ciphers used for the encryption, MAC algorithms used for data integrity, key exchange methods to set up one-time session keys, public algorithms for authentication, and finally, compression algorithms. Both client and server send each other an SSH MSG Kexinit message, listing their preference for these options, where we can see in order first the server proposal, then the client proposal, and last the negotiation result to be used during the transfer. Negotiation happens first for the key exchange, then the host key type and ciphers. For each of them, both server and client has sent a list and it's agreed for any first match they have. Now that we have reviewed these concepts, let's say that as a control administrator, I've been asked to configure the MFT client to use a specific cipher, in this case, AES256GCM. First, we need to check if the cipher is supported. So I am back to the documentation link found on the mentioned knowledge article, and yes, it is. So now I am going to tune the MFT properties file to my business need on the desired agent. I am connected to it and place on the AFT data folder. The file I need to use is called AFT configurable properties. I have already created a backup of it to keep safe the default configuration as it is. For this demo, I have duplicated the file and I have already edited it. The property we need to modify for the SFTP ciphers is called COM BMC AFT configurable SFTP all ciphers. Let me please show it. As you can see, I have commented 
all the default lines for this property and created a new one which only contains this new cipher. Please note that this cipher wasn't present in the previous commented lines, so it isn't available out of the box. Swapping the files for the change to be applied and enabling the agent debug. So now let's run the job and we'll check the negotiation using the CTM MFT log file again. We can see that the server list contains the desired cipher. Then in the MFT client cipher list, it is the only one available based on the customized settings we did in the AFT configurable properties file. And this is why the negotiation result is to use it. Please don't forget to disable the agent debug after any test you may run. Before concluding this demo, I would like to mention a couple of OS commands which might be useful to gather insights about the negotiation out of content. SSH-VVVV will print all the negotiation messages while connecting through SSH. And SSH-Q cipher will show the list of ciphers on the actual host. Last, OS SSH logs are useful to understand issues if present. Going back to Drew, thank you all for your time. Thank you, David, for showing how to configure these algorithms and ciphers for the MFT client. Our next one is about how to configure security key algorithms and ciphers in the Manage File Transfer SFTP server. We have Melvin, who is going to lead us through this demonstration. Melvin, please go ahead. Thank you for that introduction. Today, I'll be looking at the ciphers key exchanges and Mac configuration for MFT's built-in file transfer server in 9.0.21.200. Ciphers for MFT file transfer server can be configured in Controlum Configuration Manager. Once we locate the Controlum agent that has MFT installed, right-click on Controlum Manage File Transfer and select File Transfer Server. This loads the file transfer server configuration management where ciphers can be managed from. Let's go to SFTP and click on the ciphers to see the available ciphers that can be added to the supported ciphers list. If none of them is chosen, then by default, all available ciphers are supported by the MFT file transfer server. Once you select the ciphers that you want on this file transfer server, you can save this configuration. There is no need to recycle any components as it's refreshed automatically. On the control agent host, you can see the updated ciphers list in the FTS underscore config properties file, which is found in the agent home CTM CM AFT data directory. On a Windows agent, you'll find all the MFT configuration files in the same directory under the agent installation home. Here, I am connected to a control agent running on a Linux host. I'm already in the agent home directory, CTM, CM, AFT data directory. Let's open FTS config properties and we'll search for the keyword ssh.ciphers. You can see the list of ciphers that I selected in the FTS configuration in CCM earlier. If you find this parameter SSH ciphers to be empty, then it means all the available ciphers are supported by this MFT file transfer server by default. Now, if you want to restrict key exchange algorithms or CACs and MACs that are supported by this MFT file transfer server, these two parameters, ssh.cacs and ssh.macs, are the parameters that you will need to change. Let's go ahead and restrict ssh.cacs, which is currently open to all key exchanges since it's empty. If we go to Controlum MFT Online Guide, we can find the list of all supported ciphers, key exchanges, and MACs for MFT file transfer server 
under MFT server section. I'll go ahead and edit the key exchanges with the ones I want and set it for SSH.kex parameters. For max, I'm going to remove what's already here under SSH.max and restrict them to the following two Mac algorithms. Let's go ahead and save this file, FTS config properties. By making changes to this configuration file, we're only affecting the MFT's built-in file transfer server. This does not affect the client side of the MFT, which is used in connection profiles to connect to other file servers. We'll go ahead and restart the controller agent and make sure the MFT container restarts to have this change take effect. Lastly, MFT file transfer server accepts client connections with both password and or key authentication. So this is the list of SSH key types a user can use to generate a key pair, which can be used to authenticate against the MFT file transfer server. When a user sends you the public key that was generated using one of the supported key types here, you will copy the contents of that public key and put it in the authorized underscore keys file using the format below, which is the username of that user space the public key. Here's an example of what uh, that looks like. To enable debug for MFT file transfer server, if you run into ciphers or algorithm issues or anything else, you have to set the agent debug level to five as you saw previously in David's demo. Debug logs are created in agent home CTM proc log directory. Two files that will contain details of FTS operations would be the CTM hub.log and a CTM MFT 921200.log. You can find the latest MFT file transfer server security information in the control online guide here under section MFT server. This concludes my demonstration and we'll go back to Drew. Thank you. Thank you, Melvin, for showing how to configure these algorithms and ciphers for the MFT SFTP server. Next up, Sean will demonstrate how to update the JRE package used by the Manage File Transfer plugin. Sean, please go ahead. Thank you for that introduction. Today I would like to go over how you would change a Java runtime environment for the MFT container on version 921.200. The need to do this can vary, but typically this change is performed to add additional key exchange algorithms or ciphers, or potential mitigation for a vulnerability identified in the currently used JRE version. Let's go ahead and take a look at the setup. Currently on my screen, I have a sample MFT job. This has been created to transfer a 10 megabyte file to verify MFT is intact before and after the JRE change. Let's take a look at the directory. We'll do an ls command, and currently you can see that this directory is empty. Let's go ahead and run this job so we can verify the transfer works before making any changes to the JRE. Now that the job is complete, we'll go ahead and check the directory to make sure the file is there. As you can see, the 10 megabyte file is there. We will run the CTM AFT container status command so we can see which version of the JRE we're using. If you take a look at the results, you can see that currently 11.0.23 is an OpenJDK version. I want to go ahead and change directories to where I have the JRE files located. You'll notice that I have version 11 and version 17 in this directory. We'll go ahead and switch to the BMC install directory and open a file called external Java path 9.0.21.200.dat. Within this file, you'll notice that the control module MFT Java home path is defined with the Zulu 11 that I pointed to earlier. You can see it right here. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to change this to version 17. So let's go back in here and we'll go down to the control module for MFT, change it to 17, save it, exit, and at this point we're going to restart the agent. This process can take a few seconds to complete. However, I do want to mention that issuing the CTM AFT container stop and start command will not work because the agent needs to load in the environment variables from the file we just edited and CTM AFT container will not load those variables. Now let's go ahead and start the agent. Again, this can take a few seconds. Another thing I want to mention is to make sure you check the documentation based on the version of MFT you're using. So that way you know exactly what minor version you're able to upgrade the JRE to. Okay, now that this is stopped, let's go ahead and go to the transfers directory. We'll go ahead and remove the file that we transferred earlier. As you can see, it's gone. Let's go ahead and check the version of the JRE that we currently have. As you can see, JRE 17 is now loaded. Let's go ahead and test this out with the transfer job to make sure it's still intact. All right, job is running. We can go ahead and take a look on the command line. And we see here that the transfer is complete under JRE 17. All right, Drew, I'm going to turn it back to you. Thank you, Sean, for showing how to update the MFT JRE package. All right, everyone, that concludes our session for today. On behalf of David, Melvin, Sean, and the entire Connect with Control M team, Thank you for spending time with us today. We look forward to you taking advantage of features that we saw today in your environment. Stick around for the Q&A session where we will take your questions. But first, you can learn more about the BMC Education course, Control M Fundamentals Operating, by clicking the link in the link section below, or you can visit the bit.ly link you see on the screen. Your feedback shapes our future webinars. We would appreciate if you will take a moment and answer a few questions for us in the survey that you will receive later today. You can find Control-M on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Links for each can be found in the link section below. You can watch previous webinars on the Control-M channel on YouTube. Today's webinar will be posted there within a couple of days. Let's kick off the Q&A. As a reminder, you can enter your questions on the Ask a Question section at any time. 